Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Derek Asante, and we have another one. Now, <clears throat> I'm excited about this episode. The reason why I'm excited about it, because this is an alumni. You've heard her backstory, and if you are now joining us on the pod, I want you to go back to like the first episode or something, because that's where she was. You know, she helped do a lot of things. Before I bring her on, <clears throat> I'm going to give her her flowers because it's much needed. The credit is, is due. Uh, and I always keep doing that because she is an instrumental part for this pod even existing, right? Even though she might be humble in some ways, but confident in so many other ways, I have to, you know, kind of put her in the spot right now because <clears throat> it's warranted. She pushed me when I wasn't ready to be pushed. She inspired me to go forward when I was scared. But the belief that she had in this pod even coming to life was beyond me because she was at the time trying to start her own thing yet. But she's pushing me before she pushed herself. So I always try to make sure I give her the credit um, for, you know, allowing me to e even be able to do this pod and give you guys these episodes after episode, week after week, because she's literally my motor if, if she didn't know now she knows because i remember when she says make sure you're consistent just make sure you're consistent you may not want to do it but you got to do it and you got to be consistent so i keep hearing that voice in the back of my head and so it's always an honor to have her back on the show and it's different this time around because she's not at the beginning anymore she's at a different plateau and i think that's where I want to kind of get her perspective on a lot of things that we're going to talk about today. And then she can share a lot of her experiences now with us that we can learn from. And a few things that I want to mention before I actually bring her on officially is she handed me this book that she had many moons back. It's an older book, uh, YouTube Secrets by Sean uh, Kennel and Benji Travis, I believe it is. And so she didn't have to do that. Right. This is more of a testament to the individual that she is. And she passed it over to me and I'm looking at it. The information is relevant. The book might be old, but the information is still relevant. And so I'm grateful for that. And I'm almost done the book, but I keep going back to chapter just to kind of remind myself again what I need to be doing. So if you've heard of that book, look for it. And if there's a second edition, I'm going to look for it as well. But I just want to thank you. Uh, so without further ado, please help me welcome back Donna Brissett. Welcome. Hey, Derek. Thanks for having me. What an intro. I am definitely in my field so from that intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's well deserved, right? Because I, I do put you in that regard. <clears throat> and so, again, thank you for everything that you do and, and that you continue to do. Now, just like every other episode thank you we've for had. continuing on, Derek. What's that? I'm Thank you for continuing on. Oh, no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now, I got a quote for you. This, this one's different. It's a new quote I found, and it's by Marie Ferrelio. I think Ferrelio or Ferrello. I hope I didn't butcher her name, but I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to tell me what comes to mind when you hear that, all right? <clears throat> it reads, you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it going. What comes to mind when you hear that? Like you got to start, you got to start somewhere. Perfection comes after being able to have your ground set and something to stand on, right? So just get started, start somewhere. Starting is better than dreaming of the start and never getting there. That's what I think of. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And <clears throat> the reason why I chose that one, to be honest, is because of what you did for me. That was exactly what you did for me, right? You pushed me to go ahead and do it. I got some good news. I want to share the good news <laughs> with you, right? Now, folks, she doesn't know I'm doing this. This is like off the dome here. She had no idea I'm doing this to her. Um, it's a bit spontaneous. But the good news is I found out today, this morning when I left home, my subscriber count was at 74, right? So I'm trying to get to 500 by August 31st. That's the goal that I set for myself. <clears throat> and so this morning was 74. I get home this evening and I'm losing my mind because by seven, I looked at my YouTube studio uh, account and I realized it said 124. Right? 
74 to 124. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, I see you. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in, but like... <laughs> <laughs> right oh my and so i'm 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 that's big i i'm i'm a last for words but that's the news that i have um you know oh my god right right I, that's amazing <laughs> i don't know Just where they came from a few hours, you, don't, you don't know where they found you <laughs> i don't know how I don't. And then I, I looked at wow. I looked at two of my videos and they had over 300, 400 views and they've been on for like five hours. So I was like, wait a minute. How is that? What's happening? Anyhow. So those you, videos are blowing up. <laughs> listen, the universe is loving me and I'm taking it. <laughs> Before you get famous, don't forget. I need. Oh, stop it. I'm trying to I'm trying to get <laughs> now. See, since you mentioned that. I want to I want to put you on spot because <laughs> you said to me, "Do I want to do this interview tonight or push it back?" And I'm like, "No," because I know your schedule, <laughs> and I don't know your schedule. But you know what I mean. You get busy real yeah, quick, yeah. so you're the one blowing up, and I got to make sure I stay close, right? But um. Oh my god. <laughs> so I, no, honestly, congratulations. That's thank huge. you. Thank like, you huge right and, and I, I bring that up only because again you said it just be consistent it may not seem like it's nothing is happening but just be consistent and that's what's gonna pay off so I think I'm starting to see a little bit of that but so thank you for that mm -hmm. so um thank you for continuing man that's like epic it's hard <laughs> it's hard I mean you know that's why I said it's epic <laughs> I'm like wow <laughs> This is that juice, though. Like, when you see that yeah. that growth, that, like, boost, yeah. it's the juice that you need to keep pushing through because continuing is the hardest part. Yeah. It's yeah. not creating the content or showing no. up. It's, like, continuing to yeah. show up. Yeah. So, like, this juice, this is, I call that, like, the mojo juice. Like, when that starts coming in, you just hop on that train and you're like, oh, we're going. That's it. Wherever <laughs> it's taking us, we are going. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm running. I'm running. Yeah. So I want to kind of give the folks that are now joining us um, who have never, you know, heard the previous episodes or our conversations prior to this. Just give them the Coles Notes version of how you got to where you are. The real quick version, because we're going to dive into the current state that you're in right now. Well, um, the really quick version of this is that I failed a lot. Mm -hmm. I gave up a lot. I quit a lot. I lacked the confidence. I lacked the drive to push through when things get hard. And I took a lot of things personal, even when it wasn't personal. And that's where I was when I was an aspiring creator, right? It's that it's me against the world, right? Like, why won't the world love me? Like, I want you to love me. Like, I love you. Let's do this, right? Um, and it just... That's where I was then. Uh, I had people in my corner rooting for me, and I was looking at those people who I'm looking, one of them I'm looking at right now. <laughs> and people were rooting for me, and I'm like, dang, like, why are they rooting for me? Like, I'm not even showing up for me. Like, how can they show up for me, right? Um, and then I just, I didn't want to let people down, and I got tired of letting myself down, so I just... I decided to start over, but mm. I decided to start over stronger than ever before and to just start believing in myself, like the way I saw and felt other people believing in me. And on your darkest days, it just takes that one person to like really look you in the eyes and say like, I know you're going to do it. Like you're, I 100% believe you're going to do it. And it's, it's that that helps you get to that getting started before you get to the perfection like I'm still trying to figure out where perfection lives because I haven't met that person yet you know <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I, I haven't met them yet and the vision changes so much throughout the process right but mm -hmm. where I was before was just aspiring struggling I was in the I was in the weeds with everybody else yep. trying to make their spot on this overpopulated platform and you know eventually I just kept my head focused. I focused on what I could control and then things totally changed after that. Nice. Nice. So what inspired you, first of all, to even say, I want to do this and, and chase this 
uh, career path? I didn't want to let my girls down. I feel like as a mom, I always have to lead by example when I can. Mm. And uh, I have all these people believing in me, knowing that I can do it, but I didn't show up for myself yet. So I figured, how can I teach my kids to show up for themselves if like, I'm having a hard time doing it for myself? And honestly, there was nothing to lose. You know, I'd already been on the platform for years trying to figure things out, right? So there's nothing to lose trying again. Mm. Um, but there was a lot to gain. And a lot of it was knowledge and experience. And the mistakes are good. Like I tell people now when I connect to people and I have like meetings, I, I let people know like the bumps are what you climb on, right? Mm. Like the bumps are going to happen, but you don't just stop. It's It was never a stop sign. It mm. was a bump climb over it, you keep going, another bump is going to come. That's how they make the roads. Like mm, you just got to <laughs> you just got to like keep that. going. Uh, and the bumps are just always what what you climb on. You just got to keep going, right? Man, that's a that's a big quote right there, by the way. That's I like that. That's a nice little sound bite too. The bumps are what you're climbing <laughs> on. Like it's true, right? Now, yeah. Recently, <clears throat> after climbing over all these bumps, you had this nice interview i think what was it the influencer was it the what was the um, yeah i was um i feel like it's net influencer yes, but net influencer. i don't want to say that's it. okay that's perfect because i don't have it pulled up so i hate to butcher such a lovely <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen <laughs> like i'm trying to make the connection how did that happen who found oh, my who goodness so uh the opportunity came to me a few months ago mm. And I wasn't really that interested because I wasn't, I didn't feel confident enough to control the narrative of what mm. gets printed about me. Uh, I'm very cautious. I'm my own PR person always, every day, every minute I'm on camera uh, and doing my jobs because <laughs> I have so many of them. But I, I just decided that I just got to stop pushing away the things that I'm too cautious about and be cautious but like lean into it with caution you know yeah. um and so the opportunity came up i turned it down and i was like you know I, i'll pass flexing not, listen i was just like no you know what i'm not i don't <clears throat> see the value for me at the mental uh place that i was mm. at uh, and then it came the opportunity came up to me again but this time it was like they have to talk to you. Oh. Like you are who they need to talk to. Mm. And then I was like, oh, like me? Mm. Well, all right then. <laughs> if the request is is me, I can show up for that. You know, like yeah. I know what I can tell you. So it was more uh, in the beginning when the offer came to me, it, was, it seemed like an offer for someone. Mm. And the second time around, it felt like an offer specifically for, for me with right. a specific purpose mm. and I was like I can I can get on board with that because what I've learned in my failures is that sometimes you take on a lot because you want to say that you're doing things but they don't serve you mm. and so then you sort of feel resentment because you're like hey I use my time to do this and it like wasn't valuable for me right, right? um so it was like shifting from that mindset to also having the maturity to look at something and say like, you know what, this is for me. It makes sense for me to be here at this time, at that place, doing this one thing. Um, but a lot of what I do now is I say no to a lot of things and I love it. I love being able to say no because it, it lets me know that the things that I do choose to spend my time on, it's mm -hmm. worth my time and the impact that I'm going to make is worth choosing that time to put in that bucket because I have so many buckets to fill and there's just not enough time to get to all of them. Right. So it's, it's now being able to like, look at it standing back and say, this bucket is worth filling. Let me spend some time here because for each time I'm doing something, it's taking time from something else that I could be doing, you know, how do you decide? And I've sort of learned that. How do you decide? Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you decide? Wait a minute. I'm going to do this and I'm not going to do this. How do you decide when to say no? And then my, my, my real question then is what did you do to get to that point, to be able to decide, make those decisions? 
Okay. Wow. Those are both really yeah, good but, questions. Yeah, so let's, let's start with that. Like, what did it take <laughs> for you to... <laughs> no, the reason why I'm asking because you just finished telling us that you were very... You weren't so confident, right? And you were yeah. cautious about all these things, but then there's a trans, you know, transformation that takes place. I'm curious, though, how did you know... Like, what were you going through that, that was leading you to that space where you're able to say, you know what, nah, maybe I don't want to do that. Yes, I'll do this one because I'm excited about this one or I see the value. Like, how did, what was that transition like? Because I want people to understand when it's happening, you may not know it, but it's a feeling. Right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I'm getting from what you're saying. So if you can try your best to kind of elaborate a little bit on what was that process like? What was happening at that time in your life that was pushing you to say, you know what, no to that, yes to this. I'm going to say something that I don't say to people often enough, mm-hmm. but this is really uh, a big part of why I make some of the, t- the decisions that I make. And it ultimately boils down to how do you value yourself mm. and how do you value your time? Time is the one thing in life that I listen to audiobooks to try to figure out how to find more time. I talk to people and some of the questions I ask them is, how do you find the time to do these things? And time is just the, the one thing you'll go up against and you'll lose the battle every single time. Um, and so I started setting boundaries on my time mm-hmm. because when you're an entrepreneur, when you're trying to start something new, you get into this habit of working around the clock. And what happens when you work around the clock is that you work, work, work until you burn yourself out. And only when you get burned out is when you stop. When you get to that point, starting over or getting started again or pressing play instead of pause takes so much muscle. Yeah. Takes so much muscle, it feels like you're walking from scratch. Like you're a baby who is like eight months old trying to figure out how to balance on these two things people are saying, those are my legs, yeah. right? Uh, it's just being able to know, like in your, you have to feel what's best for you and you have to, something that I do that really helps me to always make the right decisions is I always think about like my end game, Mm. my goals, my business goals. And is this one thing going to help me continue on my journey to reach those goals? Or is this thing going to hold me back Uh. from getting to reaching those goals? And I weigh things like that, right? I weigh it. Is this a part of the big picture? Because for me, I no longer can think little picture. Everything for me is like big picture. If I do this, everything's like a game of chess, right? Right. If I do this, then these three things can happen after. Mm -hmm. Am I prepared to handle each way that this works out? Or am I not sure if like the path is clear? If the path isn't clear, I usually don't dive in. Mm I need to foresee uh, what the situation is going to look like for me to see if it's actually worth investing my time right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when I say no, it doesn't mean no forever. It just means no, not right now. Right. right? And then that's the, that's the power of it. Like I say no more than I say yes on a weekly basis. And I used to not say no because I felt people would hate me for it. Mm -hmm. Now people love when I say no. They're like, (laughs) oh, not this week. Sure. What about next next month? Right. And and so I had to learn through burning out a few times that it's my job as a businesswoman to protect myself against that. Because I have to work extra hard when I allow myself to get burned out. And it becomes that vicious cycle where you can't hop off. And so for every decision I make, I try to protect that person within, Mm. you know, because I'm not the creative when I'm making those business decisions. I'm like the CEO or some other title with my seven hats that I wear on on a different day. And it's being able to think business minded and know, okay, right now, you're not the person creating the content. You're the person who has to find the time in the schedule mm-hmm. to see if this is something that you can do. So you have to think like that and always know that for each choice that you make, it could impact your future success. Mm. And so you have to choose wisely because brand, businesses, people, they love being around successful people. 
Yep. They do. It's just the way that it is, right? Yep. And so if I want to be that successful person, I have to make sure that I protect myself from not being able to show up in that category, yep. right? Because burnout is real. And burnout takes four times as long to try to pull yourself through than it is to just, you know, get up and create whatever piece of content that is. It could be poetry. It could be like writing a blog post. It could be showing up on a podcast. It could yeah. be anything. It could just be showing up for life. Yeah. All that becomes harder when you're burned out. Wow. So you said yes to the net influencer, right? Yes. What did that, interview teach you about yourself did you learn anything new about yourself when you had that conversation oh man i don't know if i learned anything new but i learned i was pretty great <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> that was great because i know what i'm capable of mm -hmm. and i know what i can do and what i need to challenge myself with but seeing things written down in an article with someone else's words and not my own. Mm -hmm. And he like when I read the article, the first thing I thought was, wow, this is like way longer than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And like, that's cool transparency. I was like, this is a, this is a lot of scrolling. I don't know. Like what's going to happen in here. I didn't even know what was going to be right. like fully in the article. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then as I started reading through, I'm like, I like her. <laughs> like, I like her. Nice. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh, you're her. <laughs> you are her. And then in that moment, I was like, okay, this is great. Now, let's see what else we can do after this. Right. Because I, I was initially intimidated by this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I told you the reasons why. Yeah. But the second time, another part of the reason why I wasn't intimidated by it is was because I know why the interview needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, there needed to be a conversation about someone who had my area of expertise. Yeah. And I'm the type of person that likes to help people, right? Pull people in, give everyone their moment to like have their time to really pitch themselves on the best leg that they can. Yeah. Um, but when I looked around, I didn't really have anyone else's name in mind for yeah. this. And I was like, Oh, I know who would be right for this, and it was me. And it made sense why they wanted to do that that interview, and it made sense why I said yes. Um, everything has to be in alignment. If it's not in alignment, it's just not the right time yeah. for me. So it was in alignment with everything that I do, um, what I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. and what I'm confident to share. So I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And then when I read that article, I was like, I really like her. Nice. Like, she's, I like her. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it felt, it felt pretty good. I don't ever, like, beat my own horn as often as I should. But in that moment, I was like, this is, like, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a really good article. Sorry, give me one second. Mazi, I'm going to get you to go, okay? And close the door behind you. Thank you. Every once in a while, he'll pop in. I he mean, probably sensed my presence. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you do the interview. And mm -hmm. I'm curious, what, what strategies now or techniques do you use to consistently engage in the quality content that you produce? Um, but before you get to that question, I want to I want to spend a minute on Costco, not to promote them or anything, okay. but Costco is <laughs> is doing a great deal for you and some of the, you know your content that you put out. Can you share a little bit of light on that? Because mm -hmm. I know somebody's going to come across you and be like, oh, she's doing videos about Costco. Yes. She does a great job with it. So please tell the people what it's about and, and how you came to that point. Yeah, so I am the founder of a YouTube channel called D and Fam. And on my YouTube channel, I post videos twice a week. And I help Canadians save time and money every time they're shopping at Costco. Um, I decided to go this route with Costco because when I was searching as a viewer for information on Costco Canada, and all the sales going on, I kept getting American sales. And if you know anything about the price difference, the product differences, <laughs> it is very disappointing 
to get in your car, get all the way there, and you're like, they have nothing of what I saw. Like, absolutely nothing. And the things that they do have is about twice the price. Yeah. And, I like, I came here expecting something, and I, and I was disappointed. And so um, I kept thinking, like, maybe someone should, like, start making this more accessible. Mm-hmm. And then so I sat on it, and I was waiting for it to become more accessible, and it wasn't. Uh, and it is available on social media, but I'm not social media obsessed, mm-hmm. right? I'm more search obsessed. I'm more, what can I have and have data that I can track and figure out like what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Mm-hmm. And for me, SEO search, that's what drives me. It's not follower counts or how many views I get on a post or, you know, anything like that. Um, I like to consider myself as like the laid back type, Mm. right? So you won't catch me doing a dance on Instagram (laughs) try to get Why not? Just do a dance in Costco. You know, I might just go to Costco and say and buy something and be like, you won't believe how much I saved. And like, that's what I'll do. I'll do to drive engagement because I want people to know like I'm excited that I got this thing that I might not have needed but I saved so much getting it yeah. um, and so it was that it was also at the time that I started that direction of my channel it was in a time where everyone was so secluded right mm-hmm. like times are scary no one can go outside um, and going shopping was actually very stressful mm. because you didn't know what would be on the shelves. And right. this is like real life. What we were, I remember waiting two hours to get into a grocery store, yeah. right? In the cold in Canada for everyone listening outside of Canada. <laughs> like this is, you got to be committed to spend two hours in the Canadian cold for groceries. That's double the price of everywhere else in the world. Okay. But- and so, um, during that time I spent, <laughs> What did you want to say? I can tell you're laughing. <laughs> because I wanted but to throw this in there. I wanted to throw this in there. For those outside of Canada, the, the grocery store you're describing looks like an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's what it felt like. Because the lines were wrapped around the grocery stores on the outside. People were watching everyone's shop car- shopping carts like... Did they buy the last roll? Because yep. I need toilet paper, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, times were, you know, it was like survival of the fittest. Yeah. And I remember having a lot of enjoyment talking to my family and friends and saying, like, hey, what'd you get at the store, mm. right? And it became this phone conversation that made everyone happy. And so I wanted to do that on a bigger scale. Mm. But I didn't want to do it just to do it. I wanted to give value. Mm. And that value I found was just finding ways to save people time because i also heard from my viewers that they were so frustrated that they went out and like what they wanted wasn't there it's like a waste of gas a waste of their time waste of their mood like just everything and and then i said well what if i don't just save them time what if i find ways to like watch things and save people money and then my viewers would leave comments like d i i saved like three hundred dollars because you told me something I bought last week was on sale. I went back and they actually gave me back the three hundred dollars plus tax and I'm like, yes. Wow. Yes. Like I'm (laughs) happy for you. And then so that genuine excitement, I mean, wouldn't you be happy for someone who came to you and was like, listen, I got I got three hundred dollars back on my seven hundred dollar purchase. Like everyone wants to know now how did you how did you do it? Yeah. And so those conversations uh, became more frequent, and then it just became obvious that that needed to be my mission. Mm. Um, and then from there, that's when everything took off. It was it was my genuine desire to help people without asking for anything else in return, except for a, a like and a subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's it's um, it's really simple. You know, but it helps. That's it. Yeah, Yeah. that's it. Uh, But then I also had to learn that I had to start asking people to support me. Yeah. Because I also was in that mindset where, like, if I just keep posting what they like, they'll just keep showing up. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was seeing numbers, like, 50,000 people were seeing my videos, but only, like, a couple hundred or, like, a couple thousand were were watching or subscribing. And I'm like... I'm going how through do that. I, <laughs> yeah, it's like, how, how do I get those folks 
all 50,000 of them that keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do I get them to switch over? And then all I did was just have that call to action, right? Like say, mm. hey, if you subscribe, it helps me grow. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And then they were like, oh, that, that's what that button does. Don't press that. And I'm like, yes. Yes, the red one. Right? And then YouTube goes and changes it to black and white. And right. I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah. Now it's like, what do I say? Like, press the white, red. I'm just like, hit the subscribe button. Okay, the one that says to subscribe, just press that one because it's no longer red, people. It's right. No longer red. Right. Um, but it's also being able to adapt to all those changes, right? Because you get into this habit of knowing what to say yeah. and how everything's going to go, and then one day you wake up and yeah, everything everything looks looks a little different, and yeah. you have to figure out like what happened while you were sleeping. Um, and so I've, I've had to figure all that out the hard way, but you know, there's no better way than the hard way because for each success that I have now, each level of success, I am so appreciative of it. It's like, I don't look at it and say like, Oh, that's cool. Now onto the next thing. I'm like, dang, that's major. Like, do you remember, Yep. do you remember what it was like? And, and now it's just taking it all in, taking it all in, but continuing on with purpose Mm -hmm. and trying to find more ways to serve the people that show up for me. Right. Because I don't want to get comfortable with their support. I want to keep earning the support. Right. So it feels good to genuinely want to help people and then people show up for you. It's like, this is what the world could be. The world could just be genuine people helping each other. It just takes like little groups here and there to make that effort. Right. Absolutely. So do you think about when you're filming, I always wonder, do you think about how I'm going to present myself? How should I project my volume? Uh, are you thinking about your eyes and are you making the right contact with, with the, you know, the video, the, the, the camera? Like, what are you thinking about? I'm trying to think, figure out what techniques you use that seems to work with your audience. Obviously, it took you years and time to, you know, build that rapport Mm -hmm. with them. But for somebody listening and somebody like myself who's still, you know, on the ground, boots on the ground, trying to get up there. What do you think about? What's your process when you're going out? Say, you know, what I'm going to go. I'm doing my regular shopping. But how do I engage when I do this film? If I do decide to record. Yeah, so a big part of my decisions is including feedback. And when I say feedback, I'm going to just shoot that, that word out and then let everyone know don't take it too heavily. Like, because mm-hmm. it's not all feedback that's good feedback, but it's good to know how to accept feedback and how to take action from feedback. And so a big part of why my videos are filmed the way that they are, a big part of why I film in the style that I do or that I show up the way that I do is because my audience lets me know what they like. Mm-hmm. And... Sometimes they let me know without me asking, which is a little harsh Mm -hmm. at times. But then I remember if I change this one thing, it'll make this one person better. And if I can make it better for this one person, there might be 10 other people who are like this one person Mm. who it might also help. Right. And so for me in the beginning, I used to go fast between products because there's like a million and one products to show (laughs) inside that big warehouse. Um, and then I realized, hey, a lot of my viewers are requesting that I go a little bit slower. And mm. some of my reviewers are requesting that they see the product and then the price. I used to show the price and then the product. Mm. Um, and then they would say things like, you know, can you make it like more clear? And I'm like, you know what? I guess I could make it more clear. But what does that mean? Uh, there were even com- what it means is to be clear. that they just want better better video quality oh, I because see. we have sensitive viewers who might not respond well to shaking right, right, right. on the screen. It might impact them in some way mm-hmm. or it could be something like the glares, which I can't control, but I try to. Yeah. I try to like shift around and get as least little glare as I possibly can. Right. It was things like that. And, and the biggest thing that I think made my videos so much better was like the music. So Mm. 
really quickly. I thought I was like a DJ. <laughs> and so, I mean, I still feel like I'm a DJ, <laughs> but I would, I would edit my videos and I would put so much thought into the music and then I had the music on blast because like I'm listening to it on blast right. and I'm like, they're going to be just as hype. They're going to be just <laughs> as hype as me because this song is like keeping me energized through this, right? And then I would see comments like, oh, it's too loud. I hate music. Mm. I don't like to watch this when you play music. And I'm like, well, listen, you know, a part of me is like the music. Right. So right. the music is going to stay, but I'm <laughs> going to have to find the volume number. Right. That is suitable for <laughs> is you. More suited for you. Yeah. Um, it was finding that medium. It was not taking it personal that you don't like it on a high volume. Like, mm. I, I forget that yeah. not everyone would like to hear things on a high level. And so... The biggest advice I guess I can give to anyone who's creating content is stop creating content with the mentality that you're creating it for yourself. Mm. Create the content for the people who want to see the videos or that you want to see yeah, those videos, is. right? Um, because if I'm doing it for me, trust me, the volume's going to be on 100. Because <laughs> I'm going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to be here for it, right? But I know that that's not going to give me the traffic that I want. It's not going to give me the feedback that I want to hear. Yeah. Um, and now I get feedback like, D, I was watching this Costco video and I was like, why is it so weird the whole time? Like the whole time I'm just not in it and I'm thinking D's having like an off day. They get to the end of the video and they're like, oh, it wasn't your video. That's why I didn't like it. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you should feel a difference in my video compared to all the other ones out there. I, I may not have expected yeah. you to say this, but, you know, hearing things like that, it really lets you know that those little tweaks that you make to serve the people who are showing up for you, yeah. it truly, it truly helps. And then there's times when I'm not in my best of mode because, like, real life, yeah. right? It, yeah. Not every day you wake up super happy and the hardest part about my type of job is that I have to show up on camera yeah. every day, yeah. no matter what I'm doing. And so if I'm having an off day, I, I have to still show up. And what I've started to learn is that my audience knows me so well. Mm. Now, even on the days when I'm like doing my best to show that like, it's not an off day, they'll leave comments like, Oh, your voice sounds a little off. Are you feeling sick again? Are you tired? And I'm like, you you know that I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> you can hear that in my voice. Yep. <laughs> With the effort, like that means you are really here for me. Yeah. As opposed to taking it in a, in a negative way, like, oh, you don't think I performed good right, enough? Right. Like that was my best for yeah. that video, right? Yeah. It, it wasn't that attitude. It was more like, yeah. You could tell yeah. that I didn't sleep like that. I just want to make another video just for you yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah, want to yeah. make this video. <laughs> the things that I know that you like, all those requests that you've been putting mm -hmm. in that I didn't get to, like that, that gets bumped up to the top of my list wow. because you there's only so much that you can do, but it's all about that impact and again thinking business minded. So if you're if you're getting feedback and you don't like it, remember who you're trying to serve. Yeah. You can't serve yourself if no one's there to support you, That's like it. on this journey where you need other support, right? Yeah. So you got to you gotta detach those feelings, not take it personal, and and make changes. Like, they're all tests. Mm. If you change and you lower the volume and you hate it, you know, wind it back up again the next yeah. few uploads or whatever the case is, but... Don't be afraid to change or test things. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of being a creator. You get to change things without any notice. And try it <laughs> and out. And you just get to test it out yeah. and see if it works. If it doesn't work, nothing's permanent. You switch back, that's right? It. That's it. What, what platforms mm -hmm. outside of YouTube have you found to be most effective, right, in reaching and engaging with your audience? YouTube is hands down the number one platform, mm -hmm. in my opinion, for the type of people that I want to reach. Yeah. Um, I know that they're not going to be on a lot of the other platforms that I am on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the next, the second thing to that would be, um, it'd really be LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Because I find as a business person, you just need to be where all the business people are at. And LinkedIn 
is where all the business people are at. So if you are trying to connect with someone and you can't find a way to reach them, try different ways. And that's what I love about LinkedIn. And then the third place, I would say, um, again, because I'm not I'm not in a social media junkie. Yeah. Right. So like the third place is your own website. If you don't have one, stop what you're doing and create one. You deserve your own corner of the internet, and that's yours, right? Mm-hmm. So when the socials stop competing and they all decide we're, we're done, we're leaving, and they create a next new 10 forms mm-hmm. of social media, <laughs> how are you going to find your people? Right. You have no leg to stand on to find your people. Yeah. So start with your website. Make sure if you want to be around business people, you're where the business people are at. Yeah. Maybe they might not be on LinkedIn. Maybe they might be somewhere else, whatever country or wherever you're in or wherever you're at. Uh, and then also have a home, have your main platform. It's good to be on all the platforms, but you also need to know which one is your home. Right. And that's the one that you do the test on Mm. you don't test on the things that you have no data to see how it's going to work yet i mean you could but then your data is going to show that you're doing a whole bunch of nothing yeah Yeah. (laughs) like we don't know how to tell you that this is a whole bunch of nothing um because it it has to make sense and when you think about like how long your journey is going to be uh you just need to work smarter not harder so have your home know where the people you want to connect with are and also Know your audience, like there's, uh, I guess the word is like psychographics. So not just what they look like, but mm-hmm. what they think, what they feel, what they believe in, and more about like what they do. So mm-hmm. like I like to picture all my viewers as like, oh, what if I ran into them at Costco one day? Like I bet this is what we talk about or like this is what we would do, right? And then there are so many times that I do go into the store and I'm just, you know, minding my own business and someone's like, D, D, and I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) and they're like, I can't believe it. (laughs) Wow. And then we, we talk, right? And it's like this, I knew I would meet you one day and I knew if we met, like we would have a conversation about like so many things. And it's because I take the time to get to know those that are supporting me. Right. And I think something that a lot of uh, creators and creators, they, they do often is that they forget to get to know the people who are showing up. Yeah. And it's so, so important because no matter what direction I go, I know which direction to go to serve the people that I've spent the time to know. Right. And then that's what creates those comments. Like I watched someone else's video and it was like horrible. And then I realized it was horrible because it was your video. And I'm like, wow. Like I, yep. wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what, do you want me to, what do you want me to say? Right. It's just, I, I would have never foreseen that coming right. as a topic. So it's, I don't know. It's, it's impact. It, it leaves me speechless. Honestly, it's like, I have such amazing supporters. I can imagine, man. And they, I worked really hard to get them, you know. So right? it just feels so much better. I didn't buy not one of them. <laughs> I didn't scam to get any of them to like me. I literally worked really hard and it showed up. And they're <laughs> genuinely here. So, genuinely here. So and now now I want you amazing. to I want you to get them to come and watch this interview when I post it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have to. <laughs> Honestly, my supporters, they they love getting to see me like in my role and also outside of my role mm-hmm. because I never I never come across as this person that like has it all together. I'm like, hey, like I do this, I do this, and I do ten other things, plus I have my kids, yeah. plus I have my husband. Like I'm just trying to save money like yeah. you all. Like I will boycott something because it went up a dollar in price. <laughs> like this is where I'm at in my life. Okay. One dollar <laughs> will have like for five minutes like i cannot buy this you know what that one dollar was just one dollar too much like there's products i haven't bought in like three years because it's gone up by like a couple dollars and i think being able to relate to that is what helps keep people around because it might look like i'm spending a lot but trust me i'm (laughs) i'm not buying the stuff that i've seen got more expensive than the last time yeah so it's 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 more than just like the service. It's also being able to show myself in their shoes, right? Like 
other people are going to the store and saying, I can't buy this and went up a dollar. And, and, and me too. And that's the thing, though. That's a part of being vulnerable, right? You, you're, you are literally putting yourself out there. Because I think that's, that's what your videos do, where they come across like, this is actually who she is. It's not an actress. It's not somebody who's performing mm -hmm. for a camera, right? Whereas some people, you can tell that, okay, you know what? They're putting on a show. They're, they sound this way in real life, but on, on in their videos, this is what they sound like, and they put on this facade. But your videos are like, nope, this is it. You know, I'm, I'm showing you my haul. I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. This is just who I am, right? And so I think you're right. Being yeah. genuine and being who you are is what people gravitate to because they can relate to that human being, not the character on, on screen, oh, yeah. right? So. You got something yeah. there. And one thing I've learned about audiences is that they are detectives. Oh, of course. Okay? They know when you're BSing. They can sniff it out like nobody's <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> they can sniff it out like nobody's business. Because it's something they wouldn't do, <laughs> right? So they're like, nah. Right. Mm -mm. <laughs> I tried to hop over the cart before it didn't end well. Right. So I know you did that for the view. <laughs> yep, yep. So you you said yeah. earlier, and you said it with such enthusiasm, about SEOs. What mm -hmm. can you share with me about SEOs that gets you so excited? Okay. <sighs> okay, I'll try to do this in like a couple lines because once I get started on SEO, I might need like two more hours to stop. <laughs> Sorry. I'll try with two be lines. Be before you start, before you start, explain to people <laughs> who may not know what, what SEO S stands for. Right. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And so the one, number one thing that you need to understand when it comes to SEO is what is a search engine? And you don't necessarily need to know just what is a search engine. You, what you really need to know is what are the biggest search mm -hmm. engines. Because that's sort of where you want to start first. And so the biggest search engine is Google. Second to Google is YouTube. Google and YouTube happen to be in the same family. So it just sort of makes sense that they are the two biggest search engines. And if there's one thing I can tell you to do when it comes to search is you need to start loving it because search is the only thing that will help you reach people when you're sleeping when you're sick when you're not feeling well when you are on vacation in jamaica or the bahamas or wherever search is your friend and once you can unlock what people are searching for and find keywords that'll help them find what you're posting in their searches it really just makes you obviously more reachable mm -hmm. it helps your growth and it also helps get you out there more and i think the ultimate goal for everyone is like we all kind of just want to be out there more to yeah. see like what direction we're gonna stick with because yeah. <laughs> there's a pivot all the time like if you go into any business as an entrepreneur or a creator and think it's going to be this one thing forever yeah just know that's a lie it will not be that one thing forever. In two months, your direction might change. In <laughs> six months, your direction might change. One thing can change and just completely flip your whole business plan. So you got you to gotta understand that that's a part of the process. So back to the search function. Once you can learn how to optimize yourself popping up into searches, mm. then you'll be able to rank number one for searches like I do. I rank number one for the Google search term Costco Canada videos. Mm. And if you type that into your Google search, you'll see that rather than Costco's website, it's just all, all of me. Wow. <laughs> so yep. The page just going down. And that wasn't because I posted a video once. It's because to date, I've posted over 300 videos. And probably over 200 of those are all Costco related. And that doesn't happen because, oh, you just found a way to hack the code. I actually had to sit down and post over 200 yep. videos yep. Yep. to be able to see that type of traction. And so when it comes to search, it's not a case of, if you're going to go viral, that's not the goal. No. The goal is how many people can you reach mm -hmm. for how long yeah. and how can you make it easy for people to find you? Ultimately, yeah. that's like the number one thing. How can you make it easy for people to find you? And that's why I love search because I can't control going viral and I, I actually don't desire to go viral. Yeah. It brings in a whole bunch of things. 
that I'm not prepared to try to use my time to deal with. Mm -hmm. Instead, I just want to be precise. I sort of want to be like laser focused, right? And if my goal is to help people when they're searching for products at Costco, I need to help people find me when they search for products at Costco. Costco. Yep. And so now that I've sort of cracked that, it's been so much easier for me um, simply because I know that I have that one thing yeah. that makes me feel proud to keep on going because it, it's really hard to land a number one search spot. And I land the page. Yeah. The, the actual page. Yeah. So yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, you know, when, when I post a video and it doesn't get maybe the amount of views I anticipated, it's like... But you hold that search spot, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you have to play with, like, your business in that way and just know that you got to have fun. Yeah. yeah. Right? You got to have yeah. fun. Even on my, my bad days when maybe something doesn't perform. I mean, it doesn't happen that much anymore. Yeah. But every now and then, you know, the elements may happen and your views might plummet a little bit. And I'm like, but... Let me just Google this real quick to see if I'm still there. <laughs> when I'm still there, I'm like, okay. Still Let got the page. 12 more hours, we'll check back and yeah. see what happens, right? But it's, we get so, like, hyper, we start to micromanage ourselves, yeah. right? It's like two minutes, check, did it, anything change? 30 minutes later, check, did right. anything? No, it's not going to change in 10 minutes or 30. They're still trying to collect the data. Yeah from that time to show you so it's not going to change so you got to know like how to how to find the systems that are going to help you reach your goals and for me i don't want to be viral i just want to be searchable because i want to i want to help people no matter where they are and no matter what time they're on the internet man that's awesome i think that's that's incredible because i i remember the beginning i remember the early stages (laughs) and now Listen, don't don't <laughs> tell them about my come up, okay? It was a little hard. It's those well first listen, four years. It's well documented, right? So it's it's interesting that you say that because people don't realize how long it takes. Right? They only see the glimpse of the moment where you are winning. They don't see the groundwork. Mm-hmm. They don't see the background behind the scenes, the grind, the hours. You mentioned your kids, what you still have to do as a mother. Right. But they don't see what you do, the hours that, of sleep that you lose. And the, that's the investment. Right. That's the dirty part of the work. But nobody sees that. And then they just see you winning and they're thinking, oh, she makes it look easy. You're always a winner. Right. <laughs> right. I lost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that puts me to my next spot here. Um, creator wizard. Right. You also mentioned earlier that you wear many hats. That's one of them, I'm assuming. Yeah. What's your role yes. there? And how did that connection... So my role... Go for Perfect. it. Perfect. So my role at Creator Wizard is I'm a community and programs manager. So our community, I head that. Mm. All of our programs, I manage them. So what we do is we teach creators how to find and negotiate their dream sponsorships. Mm. So whether it's trying to find the brand that you want to pitch, whether it's trying to figure out what's negotiable in a in a campaign or a contract or how to figure out what the contract is saying, sometimes you might look at those things and it might seem like you're reading Morse code or something like right. that, right? Um, or it could be just trying to level up your business as a creator. Mm. Go from trying to chase money to now knowing when your money is going to come in because you have a system in place that's going to help you have repeated business and also help you make smarter business decisions, right? Mm -hmm. Like I actually just posted a video this week sharing that I feel so uh, humble Mm -hmm. to be in a situation where I feel like I never have to worry about sponsorships ever again. Wow. Ever. Like, I will see an opportunity and I will always know, like, is this something you should do Mm -hmm. or is this something that, like, is available? You have to know. Just because it's available doesn't mean you should do it because that that could ruin your business later, right? right? Right. And so it's, it's knowing all of that and being able to help others advance in their business and increase their income and 
I am so passionate about my, about my job at Create a Wizard because I was also a student of the program. Mm. And it was that specific program, Brand Deal Wizard, that taught me everything I needed to know to master sponsorships, master negotiating, and understand what the heck I'm going to do with my business wow. and how to make it so I don't have to stress over income mm. every minute of every day, which is the number one thing creators are stressing about because guess what when you go viral and get a million views you get zero dollars still yep. like yep. <laughs> people see you yep. but no one's saying here let me pay you yeah. right and it's i feel um so privileged to not have a large following to not have paid for any success and to be able to flaunt it and tell people, like, there is a way for you to do this without cheating. Mm -hmm. There is a way for you to do this with proven tactics that work for people time and time again. Being able to help people unlock that. And also, one of my specialties is also boosting others' confidence, mm -hmm. which sounds crazy because I know at the beginning of this episode, <laughs> I was like, the confidence... It wasn't there, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but I cheered you on yeah. when you were like, hey, you know, I'm thinking of doing this thing. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, you, you have to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to do it. And you have to, like, be consistent doing it. And so it's now, because of what I do, I get to do the help, like, what I helped with you on such a larger scale. Yeah. And it's. Sometimes I, I do coaching sessions and sometimes I have like meetings and when I leave the meeting, I get an email with feedback like major unlock, totally worth my time, best decision I ever made. Like you just inspired me to like do this thing that I didn't even know I was going to do. And it's like, that's the impact like that. That is everything. And so yeah, I love my job at Creator Wizard. I love working with creators. I love helping other creators make more money, like thousands and thousands of dollars more money. Um, and it feels it feels good to just feel so confident in the system that I can teach it and I can apply it to my own business and just know it works. So it just works. So let's 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 do a bit of a scenario role play, right? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna be that creator that's trying to get where I want to get. And I get approached by a brand that wants to do like a collaboration of some sort. What are the things that I should be wary of that could impact my business in a negative way and in a positive way? What advice would you give me for? There is a, there's a lot that you should be aware of. <laughs> so, so give me, give me two of each. Things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>... Okay. <laughs> The first thing that I want any creator to be aware of is the word perpetual, perpetuity. Anything that sounds like foreverness, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be aware of what, if you are being offered something in perpetuity and you don't know what that means, you first should probably look it up, find out that you're signing away your whole life forever. Mm. Um, and then just be mindful of that, right? Because you're likely not charging for forever. Right. Right. But forever is a long time. So, okay. So that's like So wait, some people have one. gotten in that situation where they've they've signed those agreements? Yeah, wow. creators till this day are still signing contracts in perpetuity. Some because they don't mind. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal for them and others without knowing what it meant or that they did that. Mm. And so, yeah, you know, Derek might sign a contract with, let's say, Home Depot, mm -hmm. right? You're going to create some content and you're going to provide it for them in perpetuity, mm -hmm. which means they're going to they're gonna have this forever, mm -hmm. okay? And then next month, Lowe's saw your your work with Home Depot and they're like, Derek, we want to work something out with you. But you can't have any content with competitors out there. Ooh. We're gonna give you fifty thousand dollars, but that that's our one thing. That's our one thing. And you can't work with our competitor within 30 days. And and you did because that, that was still wow. during that time. Now you did the work with Home Depot for two thousand. You can't get the fifty thousand dollar deal because you signed away perpetuity 
<sighs> My gosh. And you agreed to be exclusive with Home Depot for six months. And Lowe's oh. actually wants you to start working with them in 35 days. So that, that's, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. A little there. bit? And so if you can't. That's $48,000. <laughs> <laughs> This is why wow. this is where uh, creators can sometimes start to feel resentful because it's like I have to lose out on forty eight thousand dollars because you set me up to sign this con. No, mm. it, it was your job. The red line, whatever you weren't comfortable with, it was your job to ask the questions that you need to ask. It was your job to understand yeah. that by doing this, you're also limiting your opportunities for the future, and you need to understand what these keywords mean, right? Yeah. So. Number one, understand what the keywords are in any agreement, in any discussion. Don't sign away your firstborn child. Don't sign away anything in forever unless unless they're going to dump, like, five trucks that have the $50,000. And for, if they're going to dump five $50,000 trucks, what? I'm going to leave it up to you to make that decision. I'm going to leave it up to you to make that decision. But if it's not going to be... 50,000 times five, you might you might want to consider it a little bit because just think of how many times that can be used or think about think about how many opportunities you might miss out on in the future. Yes. What if you're permanently up on Home Depot's website and then they're no longer in business? Maybe they went down with like a scandal. You know, this is just hypothetical, obviously. Um, but now your name is tied to it forever because your content is a part of whatever caused something to happen, right? right. So, like, you always have to think about that. Um, you also have to think about not being the test dummy for anyone's test. Wow. Brands are not going to allow creators to just test things with them. Mm. Creators are brands. Why are you allowing brands to, to just test, test things? with you yeah. right like you have to understand that you are the brand and then that's the second thing um you have to start thinking like a business start thinking like a brand and start being a business person yeah. make business decisions stop taking things personal understand that these okay. things coming in and out are a part of the process right it's not personal it's not just against you this is just the way that it is and it's your job to flag it it's your job to say you know what i'd actually love to do this in perpetuity and here's what the investment is going to look like it's going to be like two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm. what do you think and they're going to be like well maybe we'll just do like a 30-day <laughs> thing <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yep <laughs> so it's um i i just hope for the creator economy in general and for anyone who's in business to understand that there's no need to climb over each other to succeed there's room for everyone to, to succeed you just have to know how businesses work yeah what choices are right for your business which ones aren't and and don't be afraid to say no like there is so much power in saying no and there's even bigger power in hearing no and not taking it personal yeah. and once you get to that point you'll be able to make more business decisions and the more decisions you're making hopefully they're all good ones the more successful you and your business will be over time yeah. um, but you got to get business minded you got to get business minded and and work hard because businesses they all have their ups and downs through the year you know yeah. it's not every month where they're in profit so you got to plan. <laughs> you got to plan it out plan and, and plan. try to work towards getting there. Yeah, yeah, because this is not something you do and just see what sticks. If you want to be successful, you can't just do it and see what sticks. You have to do it with purpose. You have to do it and know who you're doing this thing for. I mean, if you had a lawn care business, but you lived in a place where no one had grass, mm. what, what exactly, how are you going to get your clients? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So think about that and think about when you do get your clients, how are you going to pay for the supplies? Yeah. You have to get the supplies 
by investing in the supplies. Mm. Investing in the supplies will help you invest in your business. And so with creators and entrepreneurs, think about how you can invest in yourself. Are you lacking the confidence? Are you lacking the knowledge? Are you lacking lacking the resources? Are you lacking the vision? Whatever area that is, pick one. Don't overwhelm yourself and say, I'm going to tackle all of them because I'm I'm bulletproof. Hate to tell you, but you're probably not. (laughs) So just pick one, (laughs) start there, make a plan to get through all of them, but you don't have to do it all at once or overnight. Like no one does it. Yeah. All at once and overnight. And the people at the top, they have people who help them stay at the top. They're not doing it all, killing themselves to stay there, you know. So just know that and know that you don't have to kill yourself to be successful. You just have to work smart and do it for the people you're creating your business for, not just for you. Man. You, you will get to do that when you say, you know what, I'm done. That's when it'll be for you. That's amazing. Like you just gave me a book worth of insight Listen, that I want my I want my cut <laughs> and I want my Home Depot truck with the fifty thousand right <laughs> on my front lawn. <laughs> right my gosh! <laughs> Thank you. That was that, that was really 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 dope because you shared some things that I was thinking about, but I had no idea what what was taking place because I didn't realize this is happening with content creators, right? You hear about, you know, deals and you hear people promoting products and and shows that they're doing and things like that. But I didn't know that, you know, these deals are happening. I guess it, it makes sense now that I hear it because there are a lot of content creators that I used to see that I no longer see. So I wonder if some of those contrasts Mm kind of wiped them out indirectly because they were forced that they can't, you know, have relations with certain brands that they mm-hmm. that was competitors or, or whatever the reason might be. But I can see it happening as you say it. Right. And I'm picturing mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that's scary. That's scary. Yeah. I mean, I did give like the one of the scarier situations like it, it doesn't have to be like so extreme and it yeah. doesn't always have to be a bad thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was just giving an example that that will hopefully resonate with the listeners and like let them know that you just have to be aware of what you're doing and if you're not aware find someone who knows what they're doing and ask them how to do it because they're more likely going to share it with you um but just trying to figure it out without knowing anything not doing any research not taking the time Mm -hmm. is really going to set you back so it's it's just important to take that step you know for me i lack the knowledge when it came to trying to work with brands and once I gained that knowledge, I was able to work with brands very easily uh, because I, now I can choose the brands that I work with. I'll give you one quick example. This is a humorous one. Hopefully you find it funny. I think it's hilarious. Uh, there's a brand, I won't disclose their name, who has been trying to work with me for, I want to say like four months. Yeah. And they are really coming in hot with their marketing and their efforts and i swear to you every week at least three people different people every time from their company reaches out and tries to make the offer and i have the conversations and i'm so thankful that i do because what they're asking and what they're willing to offer it's not matching up and being in the position where I know the questions to ask to find out if what they want and what they're offering is a match makes me feel so equipped that each time these three people every week reach out to me and I entertain this conversation, it's like, this isn't, wow. you know, like I, I hear you. And I'm so happy that there are so many people working with you. For me, that's a no. Let me know when your situation changes. I mean, those are not the words that I use. I'm way more professional than that. Um, But can you imagine for four months, three people every week that you like, and the names just rotate and rotate and rotate. And and when you look at what they're asking, I don't even think they've watched my videos. Wow. Because they would know. And... 
Wow. If they watch my videos, their ask wouldn't be an ask because that's not an option for me. Right. Um, and I think, I think with creators, especially like in my early days, if a brand reached out to me and when brands did reach out to me in my early days, I said yes without knowing what I said yes to. And I over delivered for free because I was just, I felt like you found me. Right. I get to give you everything that I have because you found me. No, Mm. it's not supposed to be like that. It's a business transaction, Mm. right? So it's not that they, I mean, yes, they did find you. I mean, don't take that away. (laughs) But just because they found you doesn't mean that you're just a yes, ma'am, or a yes, sir, or a yes, whoever, right? right? Like, you just have to understand that it's still your job to ask these questions. It's still your job to choose the partnerships that are right for you and not just accept all the ones that are offered. I mean, I know this wouldn't go over well with my audience Mm. and I, I, I don't think that they know. (laughs) I don't think that they're watching my videos (laughs) uh, because what they're asking me to do is not, is not something that I, I do in, in all the hundreds of videos that I've shared. So, right. It's, it's okay for me to say no wow. uh, because I know that I'm not missing out on anything. And I get to sleep really good at night for saying no to that. Yeah. Because if I said yes, I would have to work so hard to try to find a way to make this work for literal pennies. And it's not worth it. No. I'm losing time with my girls. I'm losing time with my husband. I'm losing time with the work I'm actually getting paid to, to do. Like, this yeah. is just not. Yeah. You got to weigh the pros and cons and just pause. Every opportunity that comes, no one is going to hate you for saying, give me a minute to think about it Mm -hmm. or let me like no one is going to hate you for that. So allow yourself to take that time to think. Just don't think for a year, you know, like come back with an answer. (laughs) (laughs) But allow yourself to to pause. Yeah. And think about it and evaluate if it's in, a, in alignment. And if it is, go for it. If it's not, it's, it's a no for right now. It doesn't mean it's no forever. It's We'll circle back. We'll circle back. We'll yeah. see if this is fitting in the future. So, great. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a few questions, maybe two, to ask. But before okay. I do, you know what we got to do next. Oh, Would you rather? Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> this is outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm going to take it easy on you with this one this time around. Because um, you graduated. You, you're no longer the young pup. Okay. You're now an exec up there. Okay. So I got to. I'm a young pup whenever it's <laughs> would you rather. <laughs> Would you rather have nosy parents or extremely strict parents? Um, for can I just I feel like this is a trick question because <laughs> the, the, the nosy parents are usually the strict parents. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> if they weren't if they weren't being nosy, they probably wouldn't have been strict. <laughs> True. Was it a trick question? No, but 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 okay. What about what about the nosy parent who wants to be friends with your friends? Oh, right. And um, and what about the strict parent who's like, listen, who doesn't want to be none of your friends? Right. Friends? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so would I rather one of those parents? Yeah. Well, that was a question. Yeah. Um. This is a hard one because I grew up with a strict parent and I feel like I made it out okay because she was strict. <laughs> so, so based on my personal experience, I'll still choose the strict one because listen. Okay. She she saw the vision. She saw the vision, okay? And like I'm here. <laughs> so then part two to this one now is which one of these would you want to be? <laughs> Um, well, I know for sure I'm a nosy parent because I'm trying to know all my friends 
and their friends' kids, and I'm trying to know my kids' friends yeah. and what they do yeah. all day because I'm trying to see like, do I like this friend? Yeah. Um. So I think. I think I would be more like the nosy parent. There I'm I'm always investigating, <laughs> trying to see, you know. Like nowadays, you got to be the nosy parent because kids, yeah. kids, they're in a generation where they're exposed to, to a lot. And mm-hmm. you sort of have to be strictness. I don't know if strictness is going to get the job done. Yeah. I think it has to be a mix of nosy and strict. Yeah. And so for that, I'll choose. I'll choose nosy, one hundred percent. It's a good balance. Yeah, Thank I'm gonna you. be nosy. I'm gonna ride out with that one. I'm gonna own that. I'm gonna be a nosy parent. <laughs> Where are you going? Who are you going with? What time? What's the address? What's their middle name? Like, I want to know all of it. <laughs> oh man, everything. Birth date. Yep, everything. That's yes. crazy. Yeah, let me know. Let me know how much mileage is on that car. <laughs> last time they got an oil change. All of that. All of that. If you don't know that, you're not allowed to get in the car with them. Oh, okay? my gosh. That is crazy. That means you just turn into the strict parent. <laughs> the crazy Listen, parent. I had to be nosy to get there. I told you they kind of crossed. <laughs> they kind of crossed. It's true. It's true. I'm trying to know. I'm so, trying to ask questions and find out. Find out everything. My gosh. Is there? Mm-hmm. Is there anything... Can you share actually one thing that you wish you had known when you first started creating content that you now know? I wish I knew to ask for help. Mm. I wish I knew to ask for help because starting out, it felt like you had to do it all alone and you had to learn the ropes all on your own. But now there are so many resources available to help creators starting out succeed i like to call it emerging creators right if you're aspiring or emerging there's so many resources available for you now ask for the help because the help is there start searching for you know the questions that you're asking and there's likely someone who wrote a blog post or a video answering your questions so be curious and ask for help because the best thing is when you ask someone for help and you thought they were going to say no and they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll teach you what you need to know. Like, where should we start? And it's like, you mean I could have struggled, but you're willing to help. Like, just ask for the help. Ask for the help. If the answer is no, yeah. just keep asking. Okay. And also help yourself. Don't just depend on others to help you. People will usually help if they see that you're trying to help yourself too. So yeah. if you want to level yourself up, like you gotta you gotta put in that sweat equity too. Um, people get on board when they see that like you are serious about what you're doing. So if you don't seem serious, it's gonna be hard for someone to say yes when you ask for help. Yeah. So you gotta do that. You know, you gotta get that book. You gotta get that class. You gotta yep. make those posts. You can't always say like, oh, I'm going to start this channel or I'm going to start this podcast or I'm going to start this thing and say, hey, I need your help. But like it's been three years and like you actually didn't start yet. It's really hard for someone to dedicate their time to help you get started if you're not starting yourself because the onus is on you. The onus is on you. It's your business. And what can we expect from Donna by the end of 2023? Like, what are you working towards? Oh, now? goodness. I know, I know. <laughs> By the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, okay, so there's, there's so much that's in the works, and there's so much that I plan to do before the end of the year. First up on the list is I am on the road to hit 10,000 subscribers wow. on my YouTube channel this yeah. summer. Um, so, I mean... I'm trying to, like, stay calm because I can't imagine 10,000 people in one room. Right. And that number, I mean, I can't imagine 9,000 people in yeah. one room. But I am ready. That's <laughs> I'm it. ready to see 9,000 people <laughs> in a room. Uh, so that would be, like, the next big thing. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I want to find different ways to challenge myself. Mm-hmm. I want to I wanna level up always. So something that I do often is when I feel like that didn't make me feel that confident or like there's that one thing that 
I kind of wish I was a little bit better at. Yeah. Instead of continuously saying, I wish I was better at this or I wish I could be good at this, I purposely do something to get better, like That's right it. away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You got to work towards it. Because, yeah, um, yeah it's, you could keep saying it yeah. or you can just be about it and like try to do it. Yeah. And what I've learned is that I was too much in my head in the early days. And now I don't allow myself to be too much in my head. Yeah. When I find myself being too much in my head, I'm just like, you know, just do it. Yeah. Just whatever you're going back and forth on, you know, just do it. you'll spend less time just doing it than you are going back and forth thinking about it. Yeah. And so once you get comfortable in your standing, you're able to do those things. Yeah. But, you know, if you're still trying to figure things out, that's, that's probably the worst thing someone can tell you to do. Um, but just know uh, when I share these things, I'm sharing it from personal experiences and facts and real life scenarios that I unfortunately have had to struggle through. So let me do the struggling and you just take the lessons and move forward because it's not nice there at the struggle, but it's really nice on the other side yeah. when you get to less, you know, there's just less stress in general about yeah. what you need to do and more focused on what you have to do. Focus is my year, uh, my word for the year. Nice. And I chose focus because through anything that you do, through anything that you try with focus, it will get done. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be um, permanent. It doesn't have to be in perpetuity. <laughs> It Love just it. Means <laughs> focus to have it be your best. Yeah. And so that's what I do now. When I'm doing one thing, I focus on just that one thing. And um, there's a couple books that I listen to that help me with that. The mm -hmm. first book is called One Thing, which mm -hmm. teaches you how to just focus on like one thing and it helps you be more productive. Mm -hmm. And the other one that helps me learn when to say no is called make time that book if there's any book that anyone chooses to buy or listen to after this episode i hope that if you're struggling with finding time in your day or if you feel at the end of every week like dang i didn't have enough time to do that thing i wanted to do it's worth listening to because the book teaches you that you have the time to do it, but you actually have to make the time yeah, to, do it. to get it done. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I had to say no because I'm trying to be great at other things. And, and if I say yes to this, it's going to stop me from this one thing that I know, right? Um, and so it makes you feel better because you know that it wasn't no because, you know, you're just pushing it away. It's yeah. no because you're making time to do that one yeah. thing and the books kind of come together like when mm. you get that mindset you're like make time yeah. one thing yeah. boom i'm focused i got it that's it that's <laughs> it that's it but i mean it's really focus focus speaks volumes if you could focus on that one thing for five minutes an hour a day whatever it is find that rhythm for you like you're gonna make progress progress is what gets you to perfection so if you're trying to chase perfect or perfection you got to focus to make that progress. You also got to be consistent to have the progress. Yep. <laughs> so yep. it's, it's all intertwined. You, know, you got to yeah. be focused and be business minded and value your time and everyone else's. Wow. Make the time. How do people get connected with you? You mentioned the YouTube channel, but I want you to kind of reiterate that again. Um, and any other platforms that you prefer people to connect with you, learn about what you're doing, how they can get actually your assistance and pay for your services, um, you know, with what you're doing at Cre uh, Creator Wizard. So share all of that with the folks so that they can actually connect with you and just have the same opportunity that you're you're having. Awesome. So if you're trying to save money at Costco, Find me on YouTube at Dean Fam, D E A N D F A M. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me on a business level, you can shoot me an email at D at Creator Wizard. But I'd love for you to find me on LinkedIn and connect because you're likely a business person. And I like hanging out with business people. So find me over on LinkedIn at D Brissett. Um, you'll find all this whenever you search me on the internet. So I'm not hard to reach. And I'm here and available and I'm ready to help those who need the help. And I'm here to cheer everyone on. You know, I'm everyone's biggest 
supporter always. And I am that because when I didn't have that, there were those people for me. And so it's a service. It's a personal mission for me. So find me. Let's succeed together. Like there's room for all of us. There's billions of dollars. Let's do it. Let's do it. Man. And I'm gonna make sure I could all just right have a portion. (laughs) (laughs) Especially when you leave that truck outside my house. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I put all that information in the description, so you guys can easily uh, access uh, D on on all those platforms. I'll get all the information and, and share it with you over there. The YouTube link will also be there, so you can easily get to it. Um, man, I can't thank you enough. Uh, we started with a quote, and I want to end with that quote because it's just so fitting the way we ended this conversation, which is, "You don't have to get it perfect; you just have to get it going." Right. And that's by Marie Mm -hmm. uh, Forleo. So stick with that until next episode. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and supporting the the pod as usual. Make sure you subscribe, like if you love the content. I think she gave us more than enough. I didn't even ask for all of this, but I got more than I bargained for. Mm -hmm. And I'm forever grateful for it. And so you guys need to appreciate that because she gave you a lot that a lot of people are paying for right now. And so take advantage of it, connect with her and get even more so you can actually elevate your game. Um, I'm privileged, so you can't follow what I'm doing. Right. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I can call her. <laughs> I'm privileged. Okay? I am privileged. Right. I, I can call and try to man, you know man, manipulate some situations and get access to information. But you know, I still, I have to respect her time, right? And that's that's what's important. So do connect with her um, on a business level and also follow the channel because you'll learn a lot about how you can save uh, when you go to Costco because we all benefit. Trust me, I don't do a lot of shopping at Costco, but my wife does and she benefits. And when she benefits, I benefit. So take advantage of it. It is helpful. It actually is. I, I'm shocked at how beneficial it is because I didn't think something like that was extremely beneficial but it is so again folks take advantage of that and until next episode i want to thank you love peace and nappiness thank you Look at that. We made it.